Well, today, yet because we are getting so close to Easter and so close to uh, uh, this wonderful week when we have uh, Sunday Palms and we have the Resurrection Day at uh, the Sunday after, I just want to um, highlight uh, those uh, moments that Jesus came here for the last week in, in his early uh, mission, in his early ministry. And we need to remind that God's plan for, for us as, a, as his creation was uh, sending Jesus Christ, his sons, to reconnect us, his creation, with him, forget of things, and getting back to him in harmony, just the same way that we as a human did it in the aiding, uh, guarding Eden. If you read the Bible, you know in Genesis, the, in the beginning, Eden and Eve, they have a great relationship with God. God always looks like he visited them and talked to them, and there was a very close relationship with them. But something happened, and we know that that connection broke, get broke. And this connection broke because Eden and Eve was disobedient for, to God, and they eat, or the, uh, they disobeyed his order. And also, the second time when the people that God put their heart on wasn't the Israelite people when they disobedient God to and make some uh, other God and honor them. Let's read what the Bible says first about uh, uh, Adam and Eve. And the Lord says, The man who has become like one of us, knowing good and evil, he must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and life forever. That is a shame because if Adam, Eden, and Eve maybe not disobey God, maybe they could live forever. Maybe in the begin, uh, after after war, God can say, "Okay, now you can eat with this uh, this this fruit of this tree." But they disobey God, and they that relationship was broken at that time. Also, the Lord says, "So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground for which he has been taken." This. It's really hard for a human being. Now they are not connected with God, but now they have to be by their own, by their own will. Second time is the disobedience of the Israelite people. The more priests they were, they said, Hosea says, the more priests they were, the more they sinned against me. They exchanged the glorious God for something disgraceful. They feed on their sins of my people and release their weaknesses. You see, human being always has the choice before then, because God make us just like Him. We have the power to make choices in our life, and Eden and Eve they chose to disobey God. The Israelite people they they see the glory of God. God uh, freedom them from the slave from Egypt. And the only thing that they need to do was obey God, worship him, but they decide not to do it. And they disobey God. And they make one, make his, uh, Moses' brother had on to make one God out of gold and worship them. And the heart of God was broken at the time. He get angry with them, and he wants to destroy them. But you know that Moses, the good man that we talked about last week, he was a very peaceful man, and asked the Lord, do not destroy them altogether. Give us another chance. And then God gives us another chance to the human being to reconnect with him, to go back to his uh, work, go back to his protection. But human beings always decide not to. And, and then in the time of the Apostle Paul, that's what happened. The humanity, the human being turns back to his creator. And Apostle Paul, 
He saw this, and he, this is what he wrote. He said, they exchanged, he's talking about the human being, they exchanged the truth about God from a lie, and worship and serve created things rather than the Creator, who is forever. Praise it. Uh, amen. You see, human being always has the, the opportunity to decide to go with God or walk a, away from him. It's sad, but most people decide to walk away from him. I've been saying this many times, but the statistical says that 80% of the people who live in Illinois State, they're not joined to church on Sundays. Only 20%. Eight people out of ten said no to God. The same thing happened to Eden when they disobeyed God. The same happened with the Israelites when they say no to God. This happened the same thing with the culture when uh, Apostle Paul was preaching. Same thing happened there, and something happened today too. People reject God. And when we started this service today, we also started with people rejecting Jesus. When Pilate has to, before then, two men to elect who's going to be saved. One hand, that was Jesus, and the other hand was Barabbas. And they said, release Barabbas. But the good thing, always when, when it's like bad news, and the other side of the coin always has a great news and great bring hope. And this God never fell. God's plans is not failing. He continue with his plan. He continue with his plan to make a connection with his creations, with his people. And that's what he sent Jesus to the earth. God's plan is to make himself known and be safe people that People know through Jesus Christ. You know, most people go away from God because they don't know God. Sometimes church who has the, the mission of God in their hand to present Jesus, we present it in the wrong way. And that's why God said, you know, my people misrepresenting me. The rely people misrepresenting me. The church is rep misrepresenting me. I need to do it by myself. And God took the human, uh, become a human, become a flesh, and live with us just to we as a people knowing him. And we know this because every Christmas, every Christmas, in every Christian church in this air used to read this Bible verse. The vision will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Isn't it? Did you hear that every Christmas? Every, every year we hear that particular Bible birth. God may know God live among us. And we read the apostle John too, saying that the, the word of God become flesh and live among us, we know his glory as, a, as the only son of God. God make presence in us, among the human beings. And God know you today. God know us because he used to live in this air too. Jesus became a human. He understand how to be betrayed for friends. Is any of you have been betrayed for any friends sometimes? Raise your hand. Yeah. Those who you love sometimes have a big, big, big uh, knife and put it in your back once, twice, and three times. And Jesus suffered that. He was betrayed for one of his 12 disciples. He knows how to be called a liar even when he say the truth. He knows when people wasn't grateful. He heals ten lepers and only one goes back to say thank you to him. 
He knows us as a human beings and because he's been present in, in this earth. In glorious moment when like, people said, oh, here's the song of David. Yes. Osana, Osana. Hey, you can be our king if you want. But also he being in those dark moments when he was in that cross. Well, not this one, but was in that cross alone because all his disciples run away, away except one. In one of those dark moments, he fell alone. He said, Father, Father, why you leave me? He knows. He knows your glorious moments. When you first time fell in love and you walk in clowns, say, Woo, I am the happiest person in the world. But he knows your dark moments in your life. And he never left you alone. That's why he became flesh. This is why he came here to this earth. To make you know that he understands your life. Anything goes away from him. He knows everything because he already experienced by himself. And he knows that and there is a moment when he, uh, you need him. And he knows that. Psalms 23, verse 4, uh, this is David writing this. this is, even, even though I walk through the darkness valley, I will fear not evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they come for me. This is not wonderful to know that. That the, the marvelous God, uh, God those who, who created the, the whole world, those things that you can see, those things that you can touch, and even those that you don't know. In the space, every single day, the science, the, uh, you know, every single day, they discover a new planet, a new start. They, they are jumping in joy last week because they find life in Mark. They were joyful. Every single day we discover, as a human being, we discover the wonderful things, but we also discover how bad can be the human being so cruel. Bad. But God is still there. God is still giving hope. God's plans for the hum human beings is still there. Jesus is still available for us. Because Jesus came to this world to make known the Father. He wants to reconciliate, reconciliate the human being with him. I am glad that if you are here because you want to be with him. You want to be a partner with God again. And he loves that. He loves your response to saying yes to Jesus. But there is too many people there that need to hear this. That Jesus not came here to condemn them, but to reconcile it with his Father. And Jesus says to his disciples, you know, if you know, if you see me, if you see me, if you know me, you know my Father. Because those who see me have seen my Father. And there is no way, there is not other way that that Jesus who came and walked through this earth and was crucified, that Jesus is the only way that we can be reconciliated with the Father. You know, when one relationship is getting broke or, or get broken, those parts feel incomplete, empty sometimes. They need the other part. See, if you are married, if your wife uh, or your husband get angry that day, oh, blah, 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 and, and you spread that day. Oh. For the beginning, maybe you said, I don't want to talk with him. I have pride. He's wrong. But the time you start passing, he said, okay, maybe I, I was wrong too. Oh, maybe I should say, maybe I, I, I have fallen. there. Maybe I have to say, forgive me. And then because you love him or you love her, you put your arms down and you're getting closer 
and closer. You know, would you like to forgive me? I think you know, I overacting. I say things that I should not. I said, really? Really? I feel the same way too. Yes, I forgive you. And they get together. And that relationship becomes stronger than ever. They'll feel complete. That is what Jesus, that's the Father feel when one people who walk away from him turn back to him. That's why the Bible said the only way that there is a big, big, big fest, big party there in heaven is when one, those unbelievers become again with God in relationship with him. That is not when the building is brand new with 10 stores and a lot of bosses there. It's not about because the programs of the church. It's not about for how many people are in the church. It's because one people, one sinner dropped his will and adopt God's will. And said, Lord, I need you. I need you. I want to know you. That day is a wonderful day. But this only became possible through Jesus Christ. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, on you do know him and have seen him. Ooh, isn't that wonderful? Sometimes people say, oh, if only I can see God. Well, God is here. He's talking to you today and to you too. If you are seeing this video, God is talking to you too. God wants to make connection with you. God don't want to do you walk your life alone. He wants to walk with you. Because what Jesus did in his last week in ministry here in earth was to announce the message of God for them. And the message of God is, I love you. I want to forgive you. I need you. I want to walk with you. You don't have to live alone. You don't have to suffer alone. You don't have to go in this life alone. I want to walk with you. Would you like to take my hand? Again, there is a choice. You want to take my hand. Do you know, I am a father, you know, the father of two. And I remember my little kids. Oh, I love those days when, when I was their hero. See, oh, my father knows everything. See, uh, not my wife, my, my father. See? They said my father. Daddy, this is broken. You fix it. Yes, I fix it. They say, hey, my father knows everything. But soon they start growing up. My father is not my hero anymore. My father had the rules that I had to obey. He don't know what he's talking about. No, I know more than my daddy. Woo! And that happened with the human beings. More than we know this life, more we think and we know what we need to do. And we walk away with God. But Jesus came here to show the Father. The Father is not what the other people said. You know, the angry God with a, uh, with a big hammer there said, guilty, guilty, guilty. We had a Father who says, I came here to save the world. Even though I sent my son. Do you know him? Well, you should know him if you come to church and or you read your Bible. And say, how can I see you, said uh, one of his disciples. Philip, he said, show us the Father. Don't you believe that I am the Father and the Father is in me? The word I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his word. Jesus, show us the Father. Jesus, bring the message of the Father for us in the message and message of hope and forgiveness. And if people want to know Jesus, know the Father, we are now the, those who made the Father known to others. Do you know that? 
We, the church, take the torch that Jesus gave it to us. In 1800, most of the Latin American country get their independence. Some from Spain, some other for Portugal, and some other for uh, from Portugal, French, and they receive a torch, a symbolic torch, that they were free. And country to country, every September, but the most countries in Latin America, their independence in September, they came from Mexico through Argentina, carrying one torch by kids from the school, and they go city by city, and they pass the torch one to another, just to remind them that this flame for them reminds freedom. We as a church receive a very similar torch from Jesus Christ. We have the opportunity to make the people God known for them. We have the same message that Jesus gave to the year. He gave it to us. He said, the authority that I received from the Father, now I give you to you. Go and make disciples. Go and preach. Go and baptize. We got the same torch. We need to make Jesus known. We had the message of hope. People need hope these days, isn't it? Because people are trying to live in the past, and they need to live in the future. The future is where there's hope for them. You know, people say, ah, the old days was better than now. See, you know, all the, the kids are lost. The, the, uh, better was before yesterday, was before than today. This war is lost. But we can say, no, that is hope for tomorrow. We, he, we see Junior, he's only seven years old. If we continue teaching him in the way, on the walk of God, walking with God, that is hope for the future. We had a young kid there. That is future. Always is future. And we have the message of hope. This message of Christ is a message of hope and salvation. Romans 5, 8 and 9 said, But God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ, Christ died for us. Not when we were perfect. Raise your hand if you're perfect. No? Oh, I thought that I was the only one who cannot raise my hand. But welcome to the club. We are not perfect. But God is still loving us. And even before we say yes, even before that, he showed his love. And we need to learn people know that God really know them. See, we said that Romans 8, 9 says, since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God right through him? It's through Jesus that we'll be saved. It's through his love and his message. His message is a message of reconciliations. And that message is, allows us to restore our relationship with him, to make connection with God. Not for just one Sunday, not for two Sundays, not when we feel okay, it's forever. And even after this life, we continue connected with them, with him. And when I said then, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all together, a full house there in heaven. And that will be wonderful. But also it will be wonderful if your co-worker, your classmate, your family, those who are not a believer or those who decide to walk away with God will be there too. But the only way that they can be there if they know Jesus. And the only way that they can know Jesus if, if we, the church, made Jesus known to him, to them. You know, God can be everywhere at the same time. That's why we, think it, we say that God is omnipresent. He can be here today and he's being in, in thousands and maybe, maybe millions of churches around the world today. 
He'd be in the hospital. He'd be in, the, in that little house in the mountain where people are praying because they live far away from another city and they work with God in their home. God is everywhere. Good places, bad places, God is there. But do you know who cannot be in everywhere? The pastor. The pastor only can be in one place at a time. That means the pastor cannot pray for your family, not can be there for your co-workers, and they cannot be there for your classmates, for your neighbors, for your family. Who should take that responsibility before the Lord? The church. Everyone has the same duty to present the gospel through our life, through our words, through our deeds. That's why we say here in Real Connection Church, we want to be the feet, the hands, and the voice. And that sounds good. Sounds nice when we wrote it. But it has to be done. We need to take the, our responsibility to do it. Otherwise, how, how, how they will know Jesus if we don't introduce them to them? Many people, when they're single, they say, oh, you're single. I, I have a girlfriend for you. See, those who are fixing relationship. oh, I got a boyfriend for you. How old are you, 21? Oh, I got one exactly for you. Well, maybe we need to be one of those match people. And we need to say, you know what? You're in trouble. Your marriage is in trouble. I got a solution for you. His name is Jesus Christ. You know, you, you're wasting your life. Uh, I know you want to live, uh, be free from those drugs, but you know who can help you? Jesus Christ can help you. We have the solution. We have the message of hope. And that's the reason why Jesus came to this world. However, believing the Son has eternal life, however, this is not a particular person. It's whoever believes in Him. Doesn't matter their background. But However, reject the Son will not see life, for God right remains on them. See, another, another time the human being has to make choices. And I hope they make the right choices. But the only way when we make the right choice is when we have the good information, isn't it? And nowadays when you're going to buy something, what do people do? Oh, they went to the Internet. They go to the store. They search for the item that they want. But uh, before they buy the item, they go down to the reviews. Oh, people say, five star, this is wonderful. Some others said, oh, this is, I can say the word, I pay too much for them. Don't buy it. You got information. And you, at the end, you make the right choice. Click, and you buy. You know, sometimes people do not approach to God. They not surrender to God because they have the wrong information. We as a believer, we as a church, we allow the evil one to give the wrong message of Christ. We allow the TV, we allow the many other people to speak for us. And this is the time when the church has to stood up and preach the gospel, the real word. Not what the TV says. The real Christ. Because the real Christ came here to make a reconciliation with the Father. This, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God who reconciliated us through him. Christ and give us the ministry of reconciliation. Why he gave us this ministry? Why he gave us to this uh, responsibility to us? To keep it in our heart? To keep it for every Sunday? No. The God was reconciliated the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. He gave us the message to us to help others to reconcile it to God too. It's not to keep it here. It's not to keep it under the seat of your car. It's to share the word. God wants to reconcile it for you. God wants to reconnect it with you. God wants a real connection with you. He did it with me. He wants to do it with you. 
That was the duty of the church today. That's why Jesus walked to this world. To make the Father know and give it the torch to us, the church. To make the Father, to make Jesus and the Father know to the people. Say, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. I, I will always want to be a diplomat. See, you go to the airport, you show your passport, you don't pay taxes, and you are a diplomat, an ambassador. But now we are. Not from any country. We are ambassadors, representative of heaven, of the God, the Father, the King of kings. We therefore cry, the ambassador, as through God, we're making his appeal to us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciliated to God. Isn't that wonderful? We got a powerful, a powerful, a powerful message in our hands. What are we going to do with that message? What are we going to do with the real Christ? It's up to you. It's another choice. We cannot obligate you to. You know many people who need Christ, isn't it? Uh, early, early, Last year, when, when I became the pastor here, I asked you to write three names of different people that you want to pray for, and they know Jesus. But at least you know three people. I don't know if you talk with them or you just pray, but you, there you go. The, your, your homework is still there. Uh, I don't know how many turn it in, but your homework is still there. There is many people who need the Lord, our friends. Don't be afraid. The worst thing that can happen is they can reject you. The worst thing that can happen is they slap the door before you. It's their choice. But at least you make a decision. You make what you did what God calling you to do. To be an ambassador, to be a messenger, to bring the message of hope to everyone that you love. And you know they need Christ. And you know that Christ is the best thing that can happen to them because what's the best thing that happened to you? I can understand. If Jesus doesn't work for you, I understand that people don't want to promote him. If, people, if God don't fix their life, I understand they don't want to share that. But from my perspective, God has been saving life. Not just as a concept. He's doing it in the practical way. He changed my life. And I believe changed many of your lives too. And we have to be like that woman in the Bible who said, Oh, I find my coin here. Listen, I was, I was looking for this coin and I find it. I am so happy with this. Well, if you find Christ, don't keep it for you. May Christ know. Just like a Christ, may his Father know to the world. Amen? I just want to conclude with, with this. Uh, because Lent is not just a only commemoration season for the church. You know, uh, uh, through the, the, the whole world, uh, Lent season is celebrating in every church. One church is doing one way, some other church is doing other way. But everyone celebrates that Jesus came, Jesus died, and Jesus resurrected. That's what they do all the time. But what is important, too, is that with that, remind us our mission. God passed his mission to us, and we are part of the God mission. We are a very, very important part in that mission of God to reconnect people with him. Are you want to be a part? Are you willing to do what God is calling you to do? Well, I cannot answer for you. You only, only, only you can say to the Lord, yes, I am here, Lord. I know. Maybe you can say it just like me. Lord, I don't think I, that, I am the right, the right person for that, for that jury. But I am here. Use me. And he uses us. Even when we know that we are not sometimes the right person to do something. Because is God want, looking for the expert? Is God looking for expert? The New Testament give me a, a really clear example for that. Do you remember the 12, the 12 disciples of Christ? 
And those 12 disciples of Christ, one was a tax collector. Matthew was a tax collector. If we're looking for an expert, who do you think maybe will be the treasurer of the 12? Well, if I'm looking for an expert, I should say, hey, Matthew, you have a lot of experience with money. You can be our treasurer. But Jesus didn't call the expert. He called Judas, the thief, the rebel, the one he made he know that will be fell. Maybe we don't feel like we fill all the categories that God is looking for. Maybe sometimes we don't feel like, oh, maybe uh, you can find another person. They can do it better than me. But God is saying, oh, I want you to do the job. Amen. Now we just say, okay, Lord, I'm going to do it. But the result is yours because you was to make the decision that was me who's going to do this work. Amen. And he says, don't worry, leave that with me. And that, uh, he really did that. Because he said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will convince the world about things. Not you, the Holy Spirit. But you have to make me known. You have to go and spread the gospel. You have to go and make disciples. The rest is on me. That's why I send the Holy Spirit to be with you, to empower you, to give you the authority and to speak through me my message of hope for this world that needs it. Amen? This is uh, our Bible verse for today. If you want to read it with me, one, two, three. We are therefore, as through God we're making. Amen. Amen. You got the key to make free many people. Amen. Let's pray.